This is Bridie. She had her stroke 10 years ago when she was 17. Good morning, Bridie. How are you? Good morning. I'm fine. Fine, thank you. How are you? I'm great, thank you. Good, good. Would you like to start by introducing yourself and just telling us a little bit about your stroke? Yes, so um, I had my stroke 10 years ago this December. I was 17 at the time. Um, <clears throat> It was just very sudden. I didn't have the usual um, fast symptoms. I just woke up with a thudding headache at the back of my skull um, and it was around Christmas time as well. So it made it difficult to get a doctor out and um, I didn't want to go to the hospital because um, I didn't want to interrupt, you know, the Christmas schedule. But um, as the days progressed, I got um, worse. Um, I was vomiting. Um, very weak, um, fatigued, drowsy. Um, and then one morning I just woke up and I felt very strange, like really out of it. Um, and my left hand side felt very strange as well. So um, I tried to walk and kind of just collapse on the floor. So um, my mum rang an ambulance straight away. Um, so yeah, I was rushed to hospital. They didn't really know what was wrong at first. Um, they put me on the resource ward thinking it was something to do with my heart, but that was fine. The test came back clear. Um, but I had blood tests and it said there was a clot somewhere. Um, and after various tests in the end, they found it was in my brain, in the thalamus. So um, it was a thalamic stroke. Uh, I'm affected um, down my left hand side from head to toe. Um, the thalamus controls the senses so I don't have any sensation down the left hand side and um, I also have a condition called central pain syndrome um, which also affects um, me from head to toe down the left hand side. Um, it's due to the infarct, the scarring in my brain, the signals can't pass through properly so I get this pain instead. Um, like very intense, uh, I mean it's there all the time but it does worsen from day to day, it's very unpredictable. Um, it's like burning, um, aching, uh, spasming, tension, um, but most of all it's the hypersensitivity and the intense burning what's um, the problem most of all. Oh wow, gosh, that's, does it disturb your sleep? And... Yeah, definitely. I think during lockdown it's, my sleep's been really bad. Um, I don't think there's any particular reason, I think it's just the stress of everything that's going on. So um, obviously the less I sleep, the more the pain is and the more stressed I am, um, the more affected my pain is. So it's a vicious circle really, yeah. Yeah, just getting yourself comfortable and yeah, yeah it is it's, It is weird. I've found that, that even though I, I, in theory I'm doing less because I'm not going out. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm not sleeping better it's, it, when I thought yeah. I would. I think there's a lot on the mind at the moment I think that's why yeah 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 are you watching the news and keeping up uh, to date? in bits I was at first but now it's getting a bit you know a bit too much to hear every single day so I just spread it out a bit have breaks that makes it easier to you know digest yeah that's good um when you say that you've it, it's a uh, thalamic stroke yeah um affects your left hand side and yep. all the pain mm -hmm. what has it done for your mobility and ability to do the things that you want to do so the movement wasn't really affected i mean it was weaker than the right hand side i think it was me trying to adjust to this odd feeling of um, one side's normal and one side's numb um, but as the months went on at the time um, i did manage to uh, walk properly um, but the only problem is when the pain's at its worst I can't really use my left arm because um, I can't touch anything it's that severe right. so I think that's the main issue um, with the pain I can't really use it because of the um, the burning and the you know the lacerating pain yeah yeah and with sensations as well is it are you um, sensitive to the temperature I, yeah, I can't actually tell the difference between hot and cold, so I don't really have any feeling there. Um, yeah, it's very strange. I, I can't tell the difference whether I have a shoe on or I don't have a shoe on as well. 
Um, I've actually got a funny story about that. Uh, when I was in college, um, about a year after my stroke, um, I was in a taxi going and I had like sandal flip-flop shoes on. And halfway down the road, I'd realised um, my left shoe wasn't actually on. So it was in the middle of the street. So we had to drive back. So yeah, I've had, you know, mishaps now and again because of um, the lack of sensation. It's amazing, isn't yeah. it? How yeah. um, your body just doesn't give you that feedback. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that is, that is so weird. Yeah, things that you wouldn't um, even think of. Yeah, um, you learn so much after a stroke um, yeah. about the brain. Yeah. Yeah. How has lockdown been for you? Well, I mean, my everyday life is pretty much spent at home anyway, but I think, um, yeah, I have a head start in that department because I do work from home. Well, I used to work from home. Unfortunately, I think due to what's going on at the moment, um, there's been a high demand of work from home jobs. Um, and now the social media job I was doing, um, my little job I was doing on the side of my content creation, they've rotated me off the system. So now I'm not doing that anymore, oh. which is a shame. Um, so yeah, working from home is practical for me. Um, obviously I can't predict my pain from day to day, so it's hard for me to go out and do a job. Um, so yeah, right. so that's affecting me I think because the demand of vacancies outnumbers. Um, you know how many people are wanting them so yeah that's my biggest worry about finding something else but um, yeah I think I do have a head start in that department I have an advantage I'm well equipped with dealing with staying inside but um, it's not having that like distraction and that escapism from my pain um, yeah I think that's heightened my emotions and my anxieties a lot um, and then, as I said before, the stress and the impact, it's led to a numerous, like, aggressive flare-ups of pain. So, yeah, that's, yeah, having to deal with something else on top of my pain already. I think it's just added an extra layer of com com complexity, really, yeah. Do you um, take medication for the pain? Is that something um, that helps? Yeah, I've, I've trialled many medications over the years. Um, I... Yeah, I tried gabapentin and pregabalin and that didn't really agree with me. Um, I've been on nortriptyline for, um, I'd probably say about eight or nine years now. Um, but just recently I was um, put on Tegretol, I think it's called, oh, um, by my neurologist, which is um, for epilepsy. Yeah. But it can help neuropathic pain as well. Um, I'd say it did start, it did feel like it was making a little bit of a difference, but now it's got into my system I think I've not really noticed any change um, and obviously then coronavirus ha happened um, I was due to see my neurologist again um, a couple of months ago but that's been put on the back burner um, I was supposed to have a phone like a, over the phone consultation but I've been put back on the list so I don't know when I'll be getting that yeah yeah, um, yeah. I think a lot of people have found that they were getting great care and consistency yeah. and then it in some areas it just stopped altogether yeah, yeah. occasionally yeah, the neurologist is really great he understands and you know he's really committed to helping me but with this not being able to see them face to face it's quite difficult yeah yeah yeah, yeah. technology is great obviously yeah. what we're doing now is is really really good but sometimes just being there with the person yeah it's just that extra dimension isn't it yeah like, definitely face-to-face -face contact is a lot different i think yeah and sometimes yeah. you just think of something spontaneously yeah when you do the you know it just rolls off your tongue doesn't it but when yeah and yeah you know on the computer you like stuck to what you want to say yeah yeah um, a little bird tells me that you celebrated a birthday i did during yes. lockdown Yes, the 14th of June. Um, uh, it was very hot, which I was lucky. Um, we was in the garden. My mum and grandma did me an afternoon tea, which was oh, really nice. cute. Yeah, I, I baked cake for myself. All right. <laughs> I've been really into baking during lockdown, so yeah, that turned out well. Um, yeah, it was a lovely day. I enjoyed it, despite not being able to go anywhere. 
Yeah, that's good. Do you live with your parents? Yes. Yeah, I live at home with my mum and brother. And um, my grandma's allowed to be in a social bubble now because she lives on her own. So she was with us as well. Oh, lovely. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Yeah, because um, I have seen on Facebook where you can get um, these. I had my such and such birthday in lockdown kind of t-shirts and yeah. things. So, uh, yeah, I got a card with that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it's all going to be uh, remembered for the 2020 is going to be remembered for definitely a lot yeah. of different reasons. It's isn't it? in the history yeah. books, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's um, amazing what's uh, it, how we're all thinking about things. I don't, I don't know if you've actually been out into the shops, but um, yeah. Well, Saturday used to be my mum, um, grandma, and my um, food shopping day. We used to have, make it a day out, uh, but now it's become a bit of a chore. I'm not. I'm not keen on it. Um, I've only just started going out in the past three weeks or so, um, going shopping. But it is quite a stress. Yeah, it is. Everybody looks at each other with such yeah. suspicion, don't they? And yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I think it still feels like a crime, really, doesn't it? Going out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's very peculiar. And um, yeah. And yeah. um, the distrust of anybody who comes too close to you, it's... Uh, yeah, definitely. Start getting annoyed. Like, do you not know your two metres? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. It's really... Yeah, I think great. that's something I have um, I miss because even though I, do, I have um, worked from home and I've been at home a lot, I still like to... Uh, I still enjoy being out like, in the hustle and bustle, being amongst it. Um, it makes me feel like I'm on the go and motivated, so not having like unlimited access to the outside it's yeah it's not great really yeah, it's just having that for me it's just having that um even though like you i spend a lot of time at home it's just knowing that if i wanted to i could just go out yeah yeah go to just the, the cinema, freedom of it yeah yeah be a friend it's that yeah. oh i can't do it it's, yeah um, my, my friends they live they don't live in leeds they live in manchester and wakefield so um like around the summertime and when it's warm, I do travel on the train a lot to go see them. So I'm missing that part of life. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's um, it is strange times we're living in, and who knows when we're going to be back to anywhere near. Yeah, the uncertainty to. of it is a bit like you. You wonder. It's given me a lot of time to overthink as well. So I think that affects my mood. So yeah. Yeah. It is a vicious circle. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned earlier that you baked yourself your own birthday cake. I did, but, yes. Uh, what are the other things that you've been doing to keep yourself occupied during lockdown? Um, well, like everyone else, I've been binging Netflix. <laughs> but um, apart from that, as I said, I do um, content creation on Inst on my personal Instagram. Um, and usually I shoot my like fashion shots outside, but I've not been doing that. so. Um, having to get creative um, thinking up more ideas unraveling my imagination for um, photo ideas that's been something I've been really committed to during lockdown so oh, it's wow. kept me busy on that yeah yeah because yeah, we were very fortunate to have you take over our different strokes yeah. Instagram account in January in January yeah, before we were all aware of what was going to happen <laughs> yes yeah we were all blissfully ignorant yeah, yeah, to what was going on in China, <laughs> weren't we? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're all planning our summer holiday. Yeah, and in the miserable winter, looking forward to summer. <laughs> yeah, making plans for yeah. going out, parties, theatre, yeah. ever. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. It takes a global epidemic to uh, does, change, does. change all yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, change your mindset as well, I think. Yeah. I, I know I've been um, thinking I definitely overshop. I really don't need all the stuff that I used to just go out and buy randomly. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I think it, I think sometimes it's. I've talked to some of my friends and they've gone OTT shopping off a well-known um, internet website and um, getting deliveries all the time. Yeah, yeah. They they've had joy. From having delivery, yeah, a parcel arrive at the door, yeah. yeah. Other people have spent 
far too much on food and drink. <laughs> um, yeah. And then other yeah, people the food say, bill is definitely up. Yeah. <laughs> and then other people say, no, I've saved a fortune because I've not been impulse by Yeah. It. Eating out at restaurants and things like that. I've definitely saved on that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when you um, can get out and about, mm -hmm. what kind of things are you looking forward to when, when, whenever this pandemic? Yeah. As I said, seeing my friends, definitely, for sure. Um, and just getting back into um, my everyday routine, really. I mean, midweek, me and my grandma used to go for lunch um, before, it, like, the beginning of the year. We've done it for a couple of years now, but we've not been able to do that. Um, I go and see her a lot, and I've not been able to do that. Um, so I am looking forward to seeing my family in person again. Yeah. yeah. And as I said, just going out when I want. Um, as I want. Yeah, just that res restrictions lifted. It's it's like we've all been given a, yeah. an ASBO, isn't it? And we've <laughs> got to stay at home. Yeah, yeah. Can't, can't break that. That's that's fine. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm with yeah. you on that one. Yeah, I think the days feel like they're mingling into one at the moment as well. So mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to, you know, yeah. Yeah. breaking it up a bit, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Now, uh, part of the um, reason that we're talking to you today is because you've volunteered to take over our Instagram account, yeah. Different Strokes. Can you tell us yeah, I have. a little bit about what your plans are? Yes, well, um, Lauren from Different Strokes, she's um, given me some prompts on um, your services, um, befriending services. Um, the exercises at the moment on your Facebook page. So I'm going to promote them in like creative desi design ways. Um, and also I'm going to do like my own thing. I know in January, um, me just having a one-to-one -one chat with people really went down well. Um, and, you know, giving my experiences, sharing them, people were really relating to them. So I'm going to continue with that. Um, yeah, and just create a little Instagram community, really. Oh, brilliant. Like I, um, I said to you earlier, I'm, I'm an old lady now, even though I was <laughs> only young when I had my stroke, because um, mine was a December stroke as well, just before Christmas. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, so I ruined everybody's Christmas that year that knew me. Yeah, it, I felt like that, yeah. That's how it, it felt. Um, so for, for me, it's 21 years. Um, and um, I can remember being even when I was only 34 thinking I'm why has this happened to me I must be yeah. the only young person yeah had a stroke because you just believe it's people in their 70s and 80s yeah at definitely. The end of their lives yeah with um, young people do you? you don't associate it no. at all do you unless no. they've had an accident or yeah. Yeah. something like that, then you can you might think, oh, came off his motorbike. Yeah. And since then yeah. he's got a head injury, you don't think, oh, he's had a stroke. Yeah. Um, so um, you mentioned that you're going to be helping to promote different stroke services. Mm -hmm. And one of those services close to my heart is the befriending service. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've just been introduced to that, which I think is really good. Yeah. It's wonderful. Yeah. Do you think it would have helped you in the uh, early days when you were yeah. just 17? Yeah. yeah, definitely. Having someone to speak to, um, to, you know, communicate with. Um, actually, when I did the takeover in January, um, I spoke about my type of stroke. It's quite a rare one, but I did find a couple of young girls who had the exact same as me. So that was really nice, you know, to speak together um, about our stroke our type of stroke and like at the time when I was 17 I just felt like I was the only one on the planet and it's hard for people to understand both medically and around you so having that stroke survivor to speak to around your age yeah it definitely would have helped yeah because I imagine that uh, I felt really isolated in definitely, hospital yeah. yeah being a 34 year old in a stroke unit with everybody else who appeared 
to be yes, in yeah. their 70s, 70s and 80s. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, hospital was a strange experience for me. Um, there was a lot of elderly on my show quad. Um, in fact, I got moved to a side room because I wasn't, I just didn't feel like I belonged there really. Um, yeah. Yeah, as a 17 year old, it was quite hard to deal with. And as you said, like, I was isolated for many years. Um, so yeah, I know what it's like now to self isolate. Um, I mean, it's kind of frustrating in a way because people with health conditions and disabilities have been telling um, the world what it's like, you know, to live like this, to be isolated, to have mental health problems. But now, um, it's only been taken seriously now everyone's been affected so <laughs> but I do hope um, this has paved the way for change um, for people to have awoken um, to the receptiveness um, and yeah and, you know meeting the needs of people in need and um, the accessibility things a lot of things have moved online so I just hope it keeps up like that yes yeah yeah, yeah here here to that I think that'd be brilliant mm -hmm. that'd be brilliant Okay, I think yeah. um, we're coming to the end of all the questions that I had to ask you. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, and thank you for, for sharing your experience and um, thank you for taking over the Insta Instagram account. I oh, think your fun. input... I really enjoy doing it, yeah. Yeah, it's just going to be invaluable. And... Um, I, like you just said, hopefully there's going to be some good come out of yeah, the hopefully. isolating yeah. that everybody's had to do. Yeah. And a greater understanding. Yeah, definitely. Understanding, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you so much for, thank you for having me. taking part this morning. It's been really nice to meet you. Yeah, and you. And, um, yeah, well, good luck with um, everything that you do. Thank uh, you. In the future. And um, I promise not to be such a, a dinosaur and look more <laughs> at <laughs> my, I'll have to get my 20, well, almost 21 year old daughter to give me some <laughs> <Yeah, tips laughs> yeah. on how I can see the content that I want to see. Yeah, yeah. That's brilliant. Oh, well, thank you very much. Take care. Thank you. And you. Bye. Bye.